yeah, they they they, uh, they they did a good write up uh, after we launched, you know, and it was it was you know the same the same kind of idea like Darks or uh, Salt and Sanctuary is like an excellent two D Dark Souls, and you know it was it was that like it was that like awesome great like we're you know that's 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 really nice of you and and uh, you know I mean obviously the the uh, the, the references are are deserved. Um, but you know, that, there's always that question where it was like, yeah, but would you care if you, would you have cared if it, if it, uh, you know, if, if we didn't if have that, if we didn't have that yeah. hook, that, that elevator pitch. Hello, and welcome to Mythical Entertainment Interviews. I'm your host, Mithrandiel. Today, we'll be chatting with Ska Studios, the developers of Salt and Sanctuary. This 2D Souls-inspired game is taking PSN by storm, and we'll be chatting with them about what got that project started. We'll also be discussing what's next for Ska Studios and where we can find them in this busy convention season. Stay tuned. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys both for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure. super stoked uh, about this game, Salt and Sanctuary. I've been having a blast with it. Um, so, yeah, just to get started for people who uh, aren't familiar with your studio, maybe the work that you've done, uh, maybe a brief introduction, uh, and then where where this idea for Salt and Sanctuary kind of came from and where this, where this project sort of emerged. Sure. Sure. Um... Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so the company kind of started in in New York, upstate New York, where James is from, and that started with the very first game, the Dishwasher Dead Samurai for the Xbox 360, Xbox Live Arcade, when that was still a thing. And <laughs> right. uh, after that, he he made a sequel, the Dishwasher Vampire Smile, and that's about when I came on. I was, you know, I'm from Washington, and I moved out there. Um, Basically, we were internet dating, and then I decided to, hey, I'm going to move out there and join <laughs> and join your company. Oh. So after Vampire Smile, we made Charlie Murder, and at some point, we started on this funny little game, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it kind of started out as a pet project, just as like a little side project, because we were at the end of Charlie Murder, and when we get to the end of a game where it's just all the bug fixing and all the release side of it, where it's not a lot of creative work. Um, you really want, you really start craving doing something creative. Um, so that's how this game started. And uh, we actually, well, James started working on the precursor to the, like, the animation system on our honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, come on, let's funny. go. And he's like, I've got work to do. Uh. <laughs> yeah. there, there was actually like, there's actually a lot of downtime um, since like the, the sun sets so early and you can't really just be out on the beach in the dark. So... You know, there's there's time to just kind of plunk around on your computer. Yeah. And this is this is Maui, by the way. You never said where it was. <laughs> oh, Maui. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm like, are we where are we vacationing on Antarctica? <laughs> or <laughs> you're like Don't the you sun know. the sun goes down for days, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> we are in Alaska in the winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good honeymoon spot. Yeah, yeah. Maui, Maui's good. Right. Which um, it, the, the kind of weird thing that happened is, I guess, at the end of Salt and Sanctuary, um, I wasn't like starting a new game, so. <laughs> yeah. But you kind of were. You weren't making so like we started getting into Dungeons and Dragons, um, <laughs> okay. like a year and a half ago or so. Uh -huh. And so James has become our our DM of one campaign that we're in, and we have like three going on right now. Um, <laughs> but he's the, he's the DM of one, and he started working on this uh, too many grandmas idea. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, well, anyway, that that became my outlet. <laughs> yeah, D and D became the outlet. The whole, yeah, the whole the whole um. Kind of like my my flow is you know working on a game really exciting at first to do all the just all the creative stuff mm -hmm. and then and then toward the end of it when it's all when it's all QA and and you know certification and yeah. ratings and release management and it just it gets really really dreary right. and uh, and then I I need some kind you're of you're like I need, okay I'm done the fun part's <laughs> over I'm ready for the next fun thing. Right. So yeah, with, with with Charlie Murder, I mean, I, I think when Charlie Murder shipped, I was I was just like, I mean, I was I was really really enjoying working on on the you know what became Salt and Sanctuary, and and uh, you know I think uh, our, our previous games kind of had that that sort of tempo. This time though, like I I mean, I, I, Michelle kind of kind of banned me from from starting <laughs> anything new until we uh, until we get everything on PC. Right. So that's because we've we've got a whole backlog of of Xbox 360 games that we we just I mean it's it's such we're such a weird we're such a weird indie company like indie studios usually you know they just develop for PC first and foremost and then right. and then if it goes well they you know they 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 pay someone to port it to to a console you know a few a few indie companies like 
like um like what what like Brian Provinciano, I don't know how he does it, but he he launched on like eight platforms all at once. But he was working <laughs> on the game for like five years, I think, too. But yeah. you know, it's he it's just it's resources. such a <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's it's such a, a massive accomplishment. So so in the past we've only released on Xbox 360, and you know, and at, at first uh, at first it was like you know when when I did put uh, Dishwasher Dead Sam around 360, like Steam was kind of just a really new the whole the whole indie gaming thing was was really new, and I think that's that's you know. I, I kind of was able to ride that wave, and that's why our, our company exists today. Was because was because Microsoft was like, "Hey, this indie thing it's it's a hot new thing. Let's let's you know let, let's yeah. let's back someone, <laughs> right? You know, and then and then that's where that's where Dishwasher Dead Samurai came up, uh, and then uh, you know, I mean, it, it did it did well enough that I was just able to like oh, start the next game and and so on and so forth until and that was that started in two thousand seven and and uh, you know and so right in the we're, we're in, right yeah in we're we're a nine year old indie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, well, the wave's over, but you know, I mean, now it's just it's kind of we we've got all the we've we've got all of our bearings and and all of our all of our tools and and just enough of a running start. So so I mean, yeah. Every every time people get get console flamey, I, I still you know I'm just I, I still have a really really soft spot spot for for Microsoft because if it wasn't for for you know what they did way back when, uh, you know, I, I I'd probably still be working at a like an applications developer for the for the air force <laughs> which, which instead yeah. of making video uh, games and then getting you know <laughs> wanting to make more video games when you get to the end of the project yeah <laughs> right right <laughs> or running dnd games yeah um, sure sure so the so the project's been in development for for quite some time um no doubt you encountered tons of issues all of the issues i i was listening to an interview <laughs> with extra life uh that you guys did last year and uh, he asked like what kind of issues you guys encountered and i think michelle said all the issues um <laughs> but uh was there a particular one that's kind of uh stood out as an especially challenging hurdle maybe in especially in the last few months before it, it officially came out uh that you were just kind of like oh my gosh are we gonna are we gonna get over this or is this gonna really kind of hamstring the release um, <laughs> I don't know. To, I'm trying to think of just one thing. Um, right, you're like all again, all the issues. Right. right. Uh, yeah. No, I, I don't. I mean, it was um, like leading up toward release. Uh, we we kind of it just we we kind of had um, you know, just just free reign as far as how how we want to schedule, you know, finishing the game when we want to launch. Uh, right up until um, right up until we got the um. We we got an okay for for the the you know a, a big secret okay for the promo that that we we launched in, uh, which gave us a timeline all of a sudden you know so having that t it was just it was just like oh okay you know so if we, you know if we launch now we'll we'll uh, you know we'll, we'll come out before Dark Souls three which is you know which is like a like a really important thing for you know? right yeah I mean a game like this like like uh, you know it's it's just people are going to be looking for something to play uh you know i mean a lot a lot of people are 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 passionate about the game for what it is but but you know those who are just like okay 2D dark souls i'll play it whatever you know i mean that right. we're like okay that that helps too yeah. <laughs> um, you know so so it was it was that and then it was uh you know cuz the promo already had a schedule and actually within the the promo i think it was uh it was kind of a at first it was an unknown if we would be able to launch like very far ahead of Dark Souls three or or just a little bit ahead or right. uh, so but yeah there's that but um, because uh, because it's a, a self published game when and you know with with Microsoft we always uh, did first party publishing so they would they would take care of a lot of the organizational stuff hmm. you know the the dreary stuff that I was talking about earlier yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so we had to do ratings so I, I think like I don't know Peggy ratings that was that was kind of scary I was a little bit worried we, we wouldn't be Peggy rated in time because you've got to like you've got to like wire money and and take an online quiz and you know <laughs> on, send on all rating sorts the game of, yeah. like a, yeah. on, whether it's like T or M or that sort of yeah thing, yeah, like, yeah yeah okay, yeah okay right. uh, so you know like send I had to send like I think it was like twenty. I mean, it was it was like right. We had to we had to make like of <laughs> we had to make an appointment with our bank and then go down there to do the money transfer. And like every step takes you know like like ten fifteen days of turnaround. So you know pretty much every step with Europe anyway takes like overnight because unless I get to it before before you know ten a.m. or so. Which I mean, which again we we talked about a little bit at the beginning, <laughs> we, <we've> <laughs> not really morning yeah. people, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So what would happen is like I would get an email, um, you know. Well, I mean, I guess I guess like just cert in general. After we got Peggy rated, then it was cert, and and getting through cert with, um, uh, you know, it's it's um, 
I, actually, I don't know. If, I don't know if this is like something I can really talk about. But just like the emails with with Europe would be like, you know, we'd, we'd get an email back at at one in the morning, and and I would just be like, well, it's not something I can fix now. Like, you know, I, I'd hear my phone beep, and I'd be like, it's it's not something I can really fix now, probably, you know, and yeah. and if and if I answer, uncertain, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, if if I read this, it might make it harder to sleep. So if I ignore it, maybe it'll be easier to sleep, <laughs> you know. And and uh, and then the next morning, I'd you know respond, and then you know the next night, I'd get a response back, and yeah, um, it was just this this really tedious process. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, in, in terms of like the actual game, I, I I mean, just getting it running on PlayStation Four was kind of a kind of a, a um, an interesting challenge to begin with, mm-hmm. um, because it's it's on it's based on middleware that lets uh, uh, .NET if you know anything about programming uh, let's let's .NET uh, mm-hmm. code run on a uh, as like a precompiled uh, binary okay. and uh, uh, it's just, it's it's mostly great. <laughs> but yeah. there, but I was there seeing some something issues. like you were you were tweeting. Was that what you were tweeting the other day? I saw a tweet from you saying like, oh, I think you know mostly good news is that we found the problem and it was in the middleman. It was in that. Was it in that yeah, software? Yeah, the middle bear. Yeah, I, you know what? Yeah, as uh, that's uh, so. So the, the there's there's a couple of different people I'm working with, mm-hmm. and uh, the the one uh, and there, there's a couple of different layers too. <laughs> right. So there's so there's our game, then there's uh, Mono Game Framework, which mm-hmm. which basically tries to wrap all of the functionality of XNA Framework, which is what we started using from from Microsoft days, and then there's Mono, which lets uh, uh, .NET code run on, <coughs> on PS4. Uh, and uh, so, so I, I was discussing with the Mono Game uh, project lead, and um, uh, that's that's what he he kind of narrated. it. Well, you know, it's there, there are a lot of mysteries <laughs> in right. this, but that, that that's kind of closest to where we we uh, narrowed it down to. So that's um, you know that that's hopefully you know we can get it we can get it just really really perfect rock solid you know by the by the time we're we're through patching but i mean we still have like there's a lot of requests and yeah. and as far as we know we can we kind of just can just keep keep patching with no uh you know there, there's there's no sort of there's no like limit they're like okay no more patches for you uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see how far it goes yeah uh, i think they just didn't want to discourage us from patching since yeah you know it's something we want to do right right um but let's see what was it. Oh yeah, yeah. So so I I know just like certain things. Like every time I I, I went to to update the um you know, like the mono game latest the latest mono game I'd, I'd have all these sort of like terrifying issues because I, anytime something breaks with that I just don't know don't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm good at working on our own game, but like right. working in in like you know more. <laughs> more and more, uh, you know, out there environment. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar territory. Uh, you right. kind of go into the to the weeds at that point. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so pretty boring technical stuff like that. I can't think of any. Um, so any... it was, it was less, it was less. Okay, is this game going to, you know, launch because of you know the way it was coded, like the work that you were doing, but more the software that it had to utilize to run smoothly on the PS4, and just the processes of getting it rated and up and running were all kind of uh, elongated and complicated and yeah, you know, and I, I guess bad that's timelines the... that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I guess that's that's kind of my biggest my biggest challenge in uh, in, in game dev is uh, you know because I, I love I love just actually making the game, but it's that last you know I, I don't know what the expression is like last mile last yeah. whatever. Well, you know, yeah, it's, it's like ninety percent ninety percent of the work takes ten percent of the time, and the last ten percent yeah. of the work takes ninety percent of the time. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like making making games is so much fun. Uh, it's just that like I I just I dread it, and I think I dread it more every like this is our fourth major release, and I. I think every major release, I I dread that final part mm-hmm. more and more. This one uh, has definitely this one's definitely been the most stressful for just everything. It doesn't even have online play, and it's still like just incredibly. <laughs> or does it? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I guess you can kind of cheese Someone it. Someone kind of yeah. like cheesed it, but it's so complicated. But <laughs> you have to trust the person you're playing with a lot, to not yeah. just delete your characters or something. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's not it's not uh, working as intended, anyways. Yeah. All right. I think you can kick him. Can't you kick him? I I just remember there was that one. There was that one kid who like trusted someone with his destiny characters, and the guy like deleted all of his characters. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't be. It was like the like he was streaming the whole thing, and like he just you can hear him the point where he like it's it's because he's like this like fourteen fifteen year old kid, and you right. can you can hear this. Uh, you're know, like, okay, I'm back. Wait. What? No, no, and like just the tone of his voice is on a it's on a trajectory towards oh, like tears. A pitch. I think oh. he, yeah, yeah. I think I think he actually does. 
cry a bit on, you Dude, know, because I was I would. Just... <laughs> <laughs> right? right, like hours and hours of your life. Like if I, right. you know, when I was playing a lot of World of Warcraft, we had people who you know, <laughs> they ran characters and they got hacked and they came back and their character was missing all their gear and everything else. It was, oh. you know, I mean, Blizzard's done well with recovering things, but that sort of thing where you lose all that work or, right. you know. Your memory card gets, uh, you know, in the old days, you know, your memory card on the PlayStation gets wiped somehow, or you get corrupt data on a 80-hour Final Fantasy save. You know, I think Oof. we've all had that Oof. feeling. <laughs> uh, right, right. right. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people. I mean, it, it seems pretty explicit that you know you you made a 2D Dark Souls game, uh, basically, uh, and, and a lot of people are are drawing that line between the Dark Souls franchise and um, your game, the mechanics that are there. Um, when you were making the game. You know, how do you feel you did in distinguishing your game from that world? And did it ever get to a point when you were developing the game where you felt like, you know, the similarities were would be all that the players would see? So basically, it's just like, yeah, it's a 2D Dark Souls. Like, you know, how do you how did you want to, like, make that game separate from that world, I guess? Yeah, we did. That was something we definitely uh, struggled with as trying to figure out, like, OK, how much of this um should stay Dark Soulsy, um, or you know, making our own thing is what the ideal of what we want here. Mm -hmm. But um, like at the end of the day, you can't really please both sides, right? You can't please both the people who just want a Dark Souls clone um, if you want to make your own game, and you can't please the people who want something more unique or original because mm -hmm. you know it's just, there's just no winning. So you kind of have to do what you want with it at the end. And it did start out like as a love letter to Dark Souls games. Yeah. Um, but it still is our own game. If you've played like our older games, you can definitely get that feel that it's so much more responsive than a Souls game. It's, yeah. Yeah. you know, this 2D platformer that is incredibly responsive and it just now has a stamina bar. Like if you didn't know about the Souls games and you just picked up this game and had played our games before, I think you would find... This is definitely a Scott Studios game, but there's a stamina bar now. And, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and now it's and a Souls you, game because uh, <laughs> yeah. you put that stamina bar in there. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, there's obviously other elements that are from Souls, like the um, the checkpoint system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny, like people see the obliterated sign and kind of think that's a Dark Souls thing, right. but we've done that in every single one of our games. Like Charlie Murder says, "obliterated when you die," so it's not like a unique thing to Souls games <laughs> right. that you get you get a "you died" message at the end. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I kind of, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been sort of reflecting on that with, with a lot of a lot of reviews are like, you know, they're just like phenomenal game, but I mean, all right, it does get a little bit a little bit shameless with its yeah. you know and, and like I, I kind of look at that and I'm like I'm like yeah but would you would you have like would you have been so interested in it if it if it if it didn't have that hook you know because I, I think that's really what happens is, is people are like <laughs> okay okay you're, you know you're, you're making a 2d dark souls like let's let's all right let, let me let me see what you got <laughs> yeah. you know where, whereas if you were just like yeah it's like a 2d fantasy RPG it's like oh yeah I've heard of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know all right exactly. yeah yeah whatever you but uh, but yeah, Diablo, just, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's and that's funny too. Yeah, right, the, right. Uh, click until you get to Satan, and you win. <laughs> <laughs> right. That that was always like a, a sort of sore sore spot was um, for like from from uh, from announce to release. The only uh, the the only Salt and Sanctuary article on Kotaku was one that was like a bunch of Vita games were announced, including Salt and Sanctuary, a Diablo clone. You know, and it was just. <laughs> It was, it was like, like I take personal <laughs> issue with that, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, they they they, uh, they they did a good write up uh, after we launched, you know, and it was it was you know the same the same kind of idea like Dark or uh, Salt and Sanctuary is like an excellent two D Dark Souls, and you know it was it was that like it was that like awesome great like we're, you know that's 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 really nice of you and and uh, you know I mean obviously the the uh, the, the, the references are are deserved. Um, but you know, that, there's always that question where it was like, yeah, but would you care if you, would you have cared if it, if it, uh, you know, if, if we didn't if have that, if we didn't have that yeah. hook, that, that elevator pitch. Right. Um, yeah. and, and in a way, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it like, like, okay, so, so now we're sort of going out there and, and we're, we're showing people that, that hadn't heard of our games, that didn't care about us. Uh, we're showing them like, we, you know, we, we can competently pull this off and, and, uh, you know, we, we can, we can make this game and, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll do all those things that, that you want to see a, a, a 2d game of this nature do. Uh, and, and so now, you know, maybe like trust us if we do a follow up that goes in more of a direction that, that, you know, that I, I'm that, you know, a, a less familiar direction that's, mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, that, that could be more us and, and less derivative. And, you know, maybe, maybe that would be okay now. <laughs> yeah. But then, I mean, and that's, it's funny because that's still like kind of a question mark. Is it, you know, or will people say like, like oh, I don't like them. Salt and, yeah, it's like a Salt and Sanctuary too. You know, will they still have that, you know, that conversation or will, yeah, will it just branch off into, into something kind of its own, its own right. genre? Yeah. Um, I think people just naturally like to categorize things like Charlie Murder, everyone just kept saying it's it's Castle Crashers. Uh-huh. Um, which is like, yeah, okay, it's it's also a brawler, but mm-hmm. yeah, we didn't intend for it to seem like a Castle Crashers. We just wanted it to be like an old school brawler, but then with a lot more flavor to it. Right. River City Ransom. River City Ransom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean the 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 literature major in me is like kind of you know people people read the work right and and they read things that the author absolutely did not intend oh totally uh, you know and so that's kind of the uh thought that i have you know on on reading the river's your game and, and other games too i mean people you know i was having this conversation with my friend and and i was saying you know people who have heard of the dark souls franchise they they you know they would still see salt and sanctuary and be like oh this game looks interesting because there are other elements that are appealing to them and people mm-hmm. who are fans that, who are fans of the Dark uh, Dark Souls franchise, like myself, would see that game and be like, "Oh, it's it's Dark Souls, but it also has these other elements that appeal to me." So, like, it it has more of a draw. So, mm-hmm. I I think that the the familiarity, you know, uh, you you have a lot of different um, archetypes that you're working with, and I think it draws a, a large group, and that's why you've been getting so many positive reviews. So. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't I have no problem with it myself. <laughs> I can I can see where right. that comes from. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's a it's a weird line. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely yeah. in that line. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we we totally don't mind the comparisons at all because that's kind of where it started from anyway. Um, and then you know we have other inspirations like the Castlevania mm-hmm. things and Metroidvania. Uh, I was I was really uh, I, I was really big on on uh, you know like the thematically. Going from like a House Greyjoy, like a from yeah. Game of Thrones House yes. Greyjoy kind of thing. Yeah. That was that that was kind of right from I the shore, the right from the mm-hmm. start, right, and like right. That, that kind of um, <laughs> yeah, you know, born from salt you, uh, and, and water. You survived. And, you yeah. survived the drowned god, basically, and yeah. <laughs> right, and yeah. Now you've been you've been drowned and you live again. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so is you know there there have been a number of, of very positive reviews for the game. Was there a, a review in specific? that came out that you know you read it and you were like wow like you you were really um you kind of like realized that the game had made it so to speak um like you were really glad that they had called you out or maybe it's a a review or a company that you had a lot of respect for and you were glad that they enjoyed it i think yeah i think we were talking about this last night We we were thinking that it uh was probably the polygon article that came out about it just because they're kind of known as this um more serious site more serious review site Mm. and to get like a review from them especially when that's so glowing and um was was really cool to see also like the the um before the review came out there was a video um i can't remember the guy's name now dude um my brother my brother and me uh podcasters uh griffin mcgillery yeah yeah so he did a um like a gameplay thing and some friends of mine who aren't super into video games but they are into his podcast saw that and they came up to us like oh my gosh my favorite podcaster was playing the game <laughs> this is you've made it you know yeah right <laughs> um we Welcome were kind of YouTube, like wow you know, popularity that's cool yeah. <laughs> so like bringing in people who like don't normally play games super a lot had seen this and came to us saying oh hey wow i saw your thing and we're like yep we're Taking over your world now, <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> We're in your world. We're wow. <laughs> we are all your base. I belong to that. <laughs> um, so what what would you say are, are some of your influences when, to, when it comes to the the art style? And not just art style, but also the art direction that you guys ha- feature in your games. Like, you know, uh, So that just really comes from this is how James has always drawn. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not like a ton of... Um, I'm sure we have inspirations, like, un, you know, unintended, but, like, the the character style just comes from the way James has always drawn, mm-hmm. like, middle school notebook <laughs> inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. he's he said before that, you know, he, it started with him trying to draw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 
And that's where like the head shape came from. Uh-huh. Probably. Yeah. Or like <laughs> Calvin, Calvin <laughs> and Hobbes. Just slap a thing. shell on them and you're good to go. Maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe, at least it would have local co-op. <laughs> if you made a <laughs> if you made a teenage mutant ninja turtle game. Um, right. What about the direction, though? Because that's another thing, too. My friend and I, when we were talking about this game, uh, he, he was really impressed with the way that the characters move. Like, he feels that the characterization, you know, kind of like the, the slouch shoulders and, and the, like you can feel the weight of the armor um, and that sort of thing. Is there, you know, is there anything else kind of behind that when you're looking at the way that the characters are animated? Uh, hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of, I kind of tend to, tend to, to like sort of slouchy characters, I yeah. guess. I mean, you know, <laughs> kind of going back, going back to, uh, you know, the dishwasher, that that's sort of how I, how I, Almost tried to animate him. This, uh, you know, the, the, this kind of like, like feral, gangly kind of kind of, mm, yeah. kind, of kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and I, I think even with um, you know with, with salt, I want I, I I tried to make them more you know like 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 upright. But <laughs> I guess I, I I probably only got halfway with that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's all like like animation wise. It's all it's all kind of iterative, and and you know, you, you kind of develop. You know, better ideas for for uh, you know what what techniques look good and which ones don't and and uh, you know how to how to properly animate a, a, a running stride and yeah uh, which like, I'm I'm still kind of getting there sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 or, or rolling yeah yeah uh, yeah and, and all that like I, I've actually I, I keep I keep wanting to like set up some kind of like a rotoscoping tech you know system where uh, you know you could just you just get a bunch of frames and then and then um, of of like of us you know acting out stuff in the and you know like in yeah the yeah you like you, the, you wear the um what, what yeah what is that like yeah, when they so have those, some ping pong those balls, little ping pong yeah, ball suits yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking like uh you know we could, we could make like um you know like like special you know like like a, like a special outfit that's that's very colorful and you know but legs are different colors so you can kind of easily tell which oh leg yeah is your right. like left <laughs> leg is painted different color than your right yeah. leg yeah it'll look yeah. ridiculous like. <laughs> I can tell his, his mind is running wild now with the, <laughs> with like the, the ideas. He's like, "Here it is. This is what we're going to do right. next time." Um, but then, but then, yeah. uh, you know, you can totally just, just, um, you know, like, like put those over the. Because I, I use this like you know two D skeletal animation tool that that I'm that I, that I made. Actually, that was I, I started that while you know on on our honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, you, know, you could you could uh, you know superimpose the, like frames of frames of you know human. Movement like video animation, and then and then try to work backwards from that. I don't know. I, I think that could work. I, that that's been something I've wanted to do for a while. Just just for getting like a, like like improving improving our animation because that's something I've I, I've spent you know in terms of content like I spend so much of our time just on on animation, right. um, you know, and and that's like <laughs> like I'm, I I appreciate that you said that. Like a lot of people are you know they look at it and they're just like eh you know the animation <laughs> looks you know yeah. but <laughs> I appreciate. Well, no, yeah, that. That, I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean the animation takes you know all that detail and, and yeah. the way that the movement and it's important too. Like not just you know not just because of the aesthetic. It's also practically in the game and the gameplay. I mean how far a roll takes you, how far a jump takes you, and like how that looks and you know what what hitboxes look like and that sort of thing. I think. Those yeah. are all um, very critical. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. Right. Speaking of which, uh, what what was your favorite um, what was your favorite boss uh, encounter to design in Salt and Sanctuary? Which one do you think is still your favorite? Um, I I know my favorites would would be the last boss because I just I, I, I kind of just yeah, pulled out a lot all the more stops. I, that one. Yeah, uh-huh. I can't. Can't really like spoiler. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I don't, yeah. Okay. Then maybe second favorite. Uh, non- <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Uh, I think like I think you and I both think, other than the final boss, like the Queen of Smiles is kind of this mm. just epitome of awesome boss design. Even though she doesn't do too much like variety, like she just she has her physical attacks and her sword and spinning attack, sword attack, spinning yeah. swords, but um. No, like matching attacks, really. Um, but it's just such a cool design, like these spinning swords, and then yeah. her pinwheel attack, and yeah, she just kind of scoots toward you. Yeah, yeah she's it's, just it's kind like of, creepy, it's creepy, very yeah. creepily Absolutely like scoots ranks toward on you. Uh, like it's kind of drawing from those like super creepy, uh, like strobe effect horror movies mm-hmm. where the monster just sort of floats at you, but you can't really see how they're moving their bodies. Right. Yeah. And you can't escape. I like, 
You can't, <laughs> you, you can't, can't escape. You can't, you're on You can't get out of the room and you're like stuck yeah. there. Man, uh, I thought of like, like, oh, you always think of these things kind of late when it's too late to implement them. Right. But there's like the Witch of the Lake fight. Someone, someone was giving the feedback that the Witch of the Lake fight, it's not super obvious where the arena is and where you can go. Um, and I was thinking like, wouldn't it be so cool if there was a wall of grasping hands on each side that if you got too near them, they'd grab you and throw you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, or just grab you and hold you there, and then the witch and then could the witch attack you. you. Yeah. Right? Oh, Wouldn't that be so it. cool? And then, you know, you think about it too late to implement it. You're like, hold on, right. guys, we're going to patch it. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah, be, we're probably not going to make the Witch of the Lake fight harder. And no, she's, she's, she's a harder one. Yeah, yeah that, that's one that we get uh, complaints about in terms of like difficulty ramping because it's it's uh you know I guess it's actually pretty it's pretty smooth right up until the Witch of the Lake and then it's and it just uh, and just yeah. greens off the edge. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty, still busy. pretty off. I'm still busy <laughs> grinding uh, currently. I, that's how I play Dark Souls too. I'm like, I find a good spot. Like I'm probably level fifty one or fifty two right now, and I'm, uh, I'm just work through the Red Hall cages, and I'm, I'm doing some work, but uh, it's keeping me entertained. Well, until Dark Souls three gets me <laughs> for sure, right? <laughs> um, so with the success of Salt and Sanctuary, uh, I know we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. Maybe there, there's not something planned just yet, but is it? You know, what's next for for Scott Studios? Is there a project you guys are, are looking at um, well I, I mean you know I, how earlier I was saying that I, I kind of hope that that salt and sanctuary will put us in a place where people will will trust uh, you know thematically like if if we had if we had kind of a follow-up game with with um, you know similar similar mechanics but really uh, you know you know themes that, that kind of go in a different direction mm -hmm. uh, you know and and uh, uh, yeah you know we, we could say this is like uh, salt and sanctuary you know it's it's like a it's like a different take on i don't know like like it'd be it'd be nice to to sort of take uh take kind of the the universe that we've started with and and explore it in new directions and you know i mean the, the idea is is um you know if we've if we've kind of you know convinced convinced enough people that hey we can we can take this this gameplay formula and and you know make it something good uh, but now we're gonna now we're gonna go in a new direction. Like if we can, if if uh, if they'll trust us enough to be like, okay, let's let's follow you in that new direction and see what happens. Uh, so that, that that's kind of where I'm where I'm thinking. Um, but you know, no no promises. Yeah. We've got to um, we we we've got to get everything on PC. Uh, and then actually, I mean, <laughs> like lately we've been we've been uh, we we realized that um, like it's funny we we had no idea, but um, we haven't launched in um, uh, in. For, for PS4 Japan, so we're, we're kind of looking into that. Oh, now. wow, yeah. That's going to be, wow, well, that's so going to be big for you guys. Yeah. yeah, so Japan and Asia, actually, like, so we, we've been talking with um, some publishing help for Japan, but now we have to figure out, okay, how do we do Asia now, too? Because those are separate regions, we found out. Um, yeah. So we have to have different publishers for that. And then I guess there's something, like, difficult, like, we're not able to release in China at all, so that's, like, another right. element um just just too violent of a game i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah bummer uh but there, yeah. there, the, you, you are in good company in terms of the things that are, are not allowed in china so uh <laughs> that, that is a long and varied list so uh sure yeah um go go ahead oh well, yeah but, but yeah i was just um yeah like like pc support is really going to be our going to be our big big you know i mean uh well yeah ps ps4 patching PC uh, PC release P PC patching, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are probably not gonna. Do, uh, every time people ask about DLC, and I say probably not. I mean, we're basically when 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 studios are like, you know, here's a game, and it's like, All right, will it be DLC? And they'll say maybe, and that means they must have been working on it for a while already, you know, and they've right. and have had the game all set up to support DLC and every like, you know, basically if we if we release DLC, we'd have to first release a patch to make the game support DLC. Then we'd have to, oh yeah, make the DLC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? And, then, and you're like, and I then, could take all that time and just make a new game. How about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, 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 I'd rather make a new game. Uh, although, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's a uh, like I, I wouldn't be against kind of like you know doing some kind of a like a you know up, updated version of, of Salt. The one thing, the one thing that I keep wanting to do to put in the game is is rapiers. There, there's no, <laughs> yeah, there's no rapiers in the game, and and I'm just like that's. You're it's like, like it's <laughs> one of the. If you want rapiers, <laughs> it'll cost you a dollar ninety nine. And uh, <laughs> well, not yeah, not as a DLC, but just yeah. as like a oh yeah, update you know yeah. now in the shops. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Right. 
Um, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean that's uh, you know aside from like like supporting the game, you know it's, it's our it's our main priority now. You know, like I said, in terms of in terms of like creative uh, creative outlets, I've had to I've had to, to, to relegate all of my all of my creative urges to uh, to D and D, just you know to DM DMing, right? Uh, and then otherwise, yeah, we're just we're just working on the working on the game. But I'm I am I have ideas for <laughs> for, yeah. for more games. Yeah. Oh yeah. So basically, oh, always, yeah. always be brainstorming. <laughs> yeah, always be brainstorming. A B B. So before we wrap up, uh, we're in convention season now. I know you guys were just at SakuraCon, right? Um, where... Oh yeah. So I was, I was more like doing my own personal art thing, and James, James was here working on patches stuff. So he was working while while you were yeah out working. I was, yeah. I was uh, other working. <laughs> other work. Yeah. It was actually really nice to do because I've just been stuck in email world. For the last two months, basically, and then this weekend I got to do art all weekend, and Yay. it was amazing. <laughs> it was such just such like a refreshing thing. That's good. Uh, yeah. So, well, where where can we find you in uh, the coming months? Uh, so, are you know, will you be at additional conventions uh, either oh, for salt yeah, or? <laughs> um, we haven't had anything planned for this, like you know, spring convention season. We'll always be at PAX Prime. You know, we'll always be applying for PAX Prime and hoping we get in. Uh -huh. um, but PAX Prime, not PAX East, just because we live out in the Pacific Northwest now and don't really want to travel to the East Coast if we can help it. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, there, there, there's something that may happen um, in July. We'll see if that works out. Okay. We may we may be going to Bit Summit if we can do it. We'll see. Yeah, Bit who knows? <laughs> Interesting. I yeah. I haven't heard of Bit Summit. It's, it, where where is that at? Uh, Kyoto. Oh, very cool. Yeah, especially yeah. If, it, if it takes off in Japan, I'm sure they'd be happy to have you. Um, right. I mean, from what I've heard, indie games in Japan are are a pretty new idea. Like it it hasn't. It, it's kind of like. Um, like like I I don't know what what really clicked about them in the in you know in, in the Western world um, mm -hmm. that that didn't in Japan but it's it's like like if you if you look at some YouTube comments on uh, never look at <laughs> never YouTube look at YouTube so weird. Yeah. Well, it, it, it <laughs> is first I mean, rule like, of YouTube yeah, never look yeah at yeah comments, <laughs> never look at the comments yeah. I don't know I don't know why YouTube is such a cesspool for comments but anyway like like um you know like like coming from from where i came from where it's like you know 2007 it's like this whole indie push and and uh and, and you know got got us to where we are today um like we basically like you know we, we I, I kind of you know jumped into this industry with this whole with this whole push of like you know yeah indie indie's great go indie and and from then to like i i don't i don't know if this if this kind of um like dissenting opinion was a thing then but if you if you look at like whenever whenever playstation announces some some indie stuff you know it's, that that ends up becoming a trailer on YouTube. Uh, you you see, like, just I mean, all of the top comments are, uh, you know, because so they so they upvote each other. <laughs> right. All of the top comments are just like about how how just you know like shameless and disgusting it is that that Sony is trying to push all of these all of these indie titles on on gamers and and you know how they're all just these greedy lazy cash grabs and you know so I'm <laughs> like th th there's there's this attitude there and it's it's kind of it's it's a big question mark like why. Uh, where where it came from and and where all this anger came from, but you know you look at that and you can kind of see so so it seems sort of like Japan is in this in this kind of middle ground where they they never got the the, the whole excitement about about indie games, uh you know so they're just it's it's kind of like oh okay it's a it's a it's like a two D hand drawn game, right? But why would why would I play that instead of like this really polished looking triple A thing from a you know from a really well known studio and you know I mean it it doesn't doesn't uh it's, it's like not, maybe it's not it's malicious dollars and not <laughs> yeah you know i mean there, there's, right right yeah it's becoming more of a thing though from what we've been talking with people about it's becoming more of a known thing right. <clears throat> depends on who you talk to yeah, yeah. you'll get you'll yeah get different, that's true different uh yeah diff different perspectives um but yeah i mean I'm, I'm always kind of kind of wondering where the where the the you know what the barometer of indie you know, opinion is indie culture. Uh, you know, and and we're just we're just making games. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. like we're we're trying to avoid any sort of uh, you know, like 
like like what is what is indie to you you know yeah. uh, avoid all that kind of stuff just 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 want to make, make games, games we want to play just want to yeah. make a game yeah. <laughs> and we hope you like it yeah well thank yep. you uh very much again for for taking the time to chat uh i do really like your last game Southern sanctuary oh, i'm enjoying Thanks. it personally and uh i know a lot of others are, are as well um and we look forward to uh, what you guys have in store for us in the in the coming months and years so thanks again for taking the time awesome. thanks for having me yeah thanks a lot yeah that's all for this week make sure to join us next week when we interview kate oxley voice actress for akane sunamori until then you can find all the latest anime video game and tech news at www.mythicalentertainment.com.